The Voice of Evangelism brings you revival in America September 20th through the 22nd at the Hickory Metro Convention Center. There will be three speakers, David Lankford, Bishop Jimmy D. Smith, and Bishop Jonathan Lankford bringing an uncompromising message. There will be three services Friday, three services Saturday, and one service Sunday morning. Come and see what God is doing. For more information, go to our website at www.thevoiceofevangelism.com. Around the world, the Spirit is moving and a voice is being heard. Welcome to The Voice of Evangelism with David Langford. You can write to The Voice of Evangelism at P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. We'll give you that address again at the close of today's broadcast. But here now is David Langford. Good evening, friends. David Langford here today. We welcome each of you to this special edition of the Voice of Evangelism International Ministries. We're trying to preempt all of the telecast and bring this special program to you today. Last week, last weekend, there was an assassination attempt upon former President Donald Trump. I know most of you today are grieved as a Christian of the voluminous amounts of evil and wicked that is permeating this nation. Right now in America, there is great distress in the land. I was thinking when I was coming to the office this morning, it could have been a much, much more darker time throughout America had this assassination attempt been successful. It would have been a time of great mourning, a great lamenting, and then there would be those who would be rejoicing and shouting and extolling the loss of a man's life. Without a doubt, that's not the right attitude. But God is trying to speak to America. He's trying to speak to this nation. And for over two years, I have been continually warning about the chaos, the destruction, the calamitous events that are coming to this nation but as I come to you today, I come with a very heavy and a very grieved heart because of what I'm seeing, what I'm witnessing in this land. And for the most part, our government, tragically, sadly, is involved in the chaos that's taking place in this nation. I want to say, first of all, there is profuse warfare over this nation. There is warfare over this nation probably like it was in the 1800s under the Civil War and the presidency of Abraham Lincoln, a time of great distress. And the only hope that anyone or a nation has can only be found in Jesus Christ. The answer is not in a man. The answer is not in a, a, a governmental uh, piece of legislation or something of that nature. The answer lies solely in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that gave his life, that all men might have life and have it more abundantly. I believe if God were to open our eyes and let us look into the heavenlies and witness the warfare, it would boggle the minds of humanity. We would not believe, we could not physically, mentally, emotionally handle the distress and the warfare that is taking place in the heavenlies. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the daughters of this world in, in high places. Having done all to stand, stand there for having your launch girt about with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Paul called it an evil or the evil day, the evil day, not a evil day, but the evil day. And I believe we're in that evil day. In my lifetime, I've never witnessed in my ministry, I have never witnessed the evilness that we are all witnessing right now throughout America and around the world. Sin, 
has grown exponentially. People are embracing heresy, fallacy, mendacities, falsehoods. They're embracing things like never before. And the only truth is in Jesus right now. You're not going to find truth in the media. You're not going to find truth in people. You're going to find the truth solely in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. This evil day is here, and I hate to report to you, it's going to only grow worse in the coming days. The psalmist said in Psalms 120, verse 7, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. How many governmental officials, whether they be representatives in the House of Congress or the Senate or whatever the case might be, have encouraged war? They've encouraged civil unrest. They've encouraged evil in this nation. And that's not what should be taking place. As a matter of fact, every church right now should just call their church to prayer and fasting. You know, I, I'm a preacher. I enjoy preaching the Word of God. But I don't even believe this is the hour for preaching. I believe this is the hour for prayer and for fasting and for intercession that God would move mightily on this nation. And whatever your message is, my friend, it's not more important than prayer and fasting at this time. Jesus told the disciples when they could not cast out a demon in Matthew 17, 21, he said, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Let me tell you something. Prayer and fasting moves the hand and the heart of God. That's the great theme and the motif in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, 15, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Our land needs a healing. Then he said, mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attent under the prayers that shall be made in this place. He's talking about the tabernacle, the house of God, people in God's house praying, weeping, lamenting, fasting. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I call you and myself and those who are watching to a time of prayer and a time of fasting. Fast. Miss a day, miss two days, miss three days, or start missing meals. But for God's sake and America, start praying and fasting and asking God to, to move upon this country, amen. It's time to seek the Lord. Psalms 119, verse 126. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. It is time for God to work. And what moves the hand of God is prayer and fasting amen there is something sinister evil villainous vile and wicked about this assassination attempt i'm going to say something that most of you will think i'm a, a heretic i've lost my mind or i'm not thinking right i believe this was an inside job by the united states government yes i said that there were no drones flying around to cover and to protect. They've asked for more Secret Service detail for Mr. Trump and his team, but they've denied it. There's something going on right now that's trying to destroy this man and what he's trying to do. And you can disagree with me if you please. That's all right. They're trying to take this man out. This is not by happenstance. There's a video out right now where a police officer went up the ladder on the side of the building saw the shooter sitting there laying there the shooter turned his rifle to the police officer the police officer went back down the ladder and radioed there's a sniper on the roof there's a sniper on the roof you, you can Google this, you can YouTube this, you can find all of this information. I'm a preacher. I, I'm not a, a, a media guy in telling news, but I'm going to share a few of these things. And after all those shots were fired, now he tells on his radio, 
There's a sniper on the roof. And all of those in there, whether they're EMT or uh, Secret Service or police or, or county police, they get to hear that. They knew there was somebody on the roof before it ever happened. And they watched the shots and heard the shots be fired. And then when they saw they didn't take Mr. Trump out, they took the sniper out. Friend, they were trying to kill the former president of the United States of America. But I believe God, in his sovereignty, providential care prevailed and protected the man. And who knows why God allowed it to hit his ear. Is God speaking to Trump? Revelation 2, 7, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Is God saying, sir, I, I almost let them take you out. But in my sovereignty, in my divine providence, I protected you. And if anybody's a believer, a Christian, has to believe the hand of God was there. Had he just been looking straight forward, it would have hit him right in the temple. But for whatever reason, he had turned his head this way, and here comes the bullet. Think of that, where the God took an angelic host and just push that bullet over whatever the case might be but God believe what you want to I believe God is in control of everything I believe God can do anything that's why we have got to pray and get a hold of the horns of the altar of God and plead with God I'm not talking about some little two-minute prayer I'm talking about intercessory prayer where hot tears stream down your face and you're crying out to God. You're pouring your heart out to the living God. And God says, my eyes are on you and my ears are attentive unto your prayers that are being made right now. we got to pray. We've got to pray for this nation. There's something terribly wrong in all of this. And I want you to pray for divine exposure. Pray that God's light will shine in the darkness and what is evil and what is corrupt and vile will be brought to the surface and that this whole nation, whether you're a sinner or saint, you get to know and see and hear the truth because the truth, Jesus said, is what sets men free. You may be right now somewhat in a, a delusional state, not, not knowing whether is this person right, is that person right. But you know what allows you to know what's right? The truth. When the truth comes out, it allows everyone to know what's taking place and you're no longer left in the dark. But Jesus said in John 3, 19, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They want to keep this in the darkness because it's evil. But I want us to pray, God expose it. God shine your Holy Ghost light on this situation. Let the American people know what's going on in this nation. I believe we would all shudder if we knew the gravity and the corruption in this nation. This is supposed to be a republic, not a democracy. It's supposed to be a republic. A republic. Uh, institution says the people have the power well I've got news for America the people have lost the power the stinking rotten government has all the power over us you don't do something right they will arrest you they'll seize your property they'll seize your checking account they've taken absolute control of this nation and the the people are to be the ones that actually govern this nation and have free and, and, and elections that are not tainted and soiled and sullied by men. And by the way, while I said that, let me say this. There's going to be a government when Jesus comes back to this earth. Number two, it's going to be a Christian government. For all of those of you who hate Christianity, he's going to rule over you. Do you hear me? He's going to rule with a rod of iron. That's for those who are unruly. I said that's for those who are unruly. You say, I don't like government. Well, get ready for it, honey. His government is going to last for 1,000 years. He's the supreme justice. He's the supreme leader. 
He'll be the supreme legislator. He'll be supreme throughout everything because he and he alone is king of kings and lord of lords. And he will rule and he will reign in this earth for 1,000 years. So get ready for it. It's coming. It's just a matter of time, praise God. I can't wait till Jesus returns. He's going to set up his kingdom and it will cover the whole entirety of the earth. It's coming. That's why we've got to get through this tumultuous and tempestuous time. Because Jesus, my friend, will come. According to 2 Thessalonians 1 and 8 says, He comes in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming in vengeance, saith the Lord. He's coming in fire and He's going to deal with all the tares and separate the wheat from the tares and going to burn up all the tares. You better get right with God and become a wheat. You better pray and say, God, don't allow me to be a goat. Make me a sheep because all the goats go to hell. Matthew 26 and 41. Hell was prepared for the devil and all his angels. But that's where God's going to cast all the goats out too. But to the sheep, he's going to say, sit at my right hand. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. I got joy in my heart. In spite of all the distress, in spite of all the delusion, in spite of all the evil that's in the land, I've got hope, I've got joy, I've got peace in my heart. Amen. Because I know who's in control. David admonished us. Don't you fret when the evil doors look like they're prospering. Their day's coming, he said. God's going to mow them down like a, a lawnmower cutting grass. He's going to mow them down. We got some great days ahead of us, my friend. We just got to persevere uh, to the end. You see, it is the enemy. It is Satan who wants chaos, distress, and civil unrest in this nation. Jesus said this in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. That phrase, more abundantly, in the Greek says, I want you to have a greater life. I want you to have a blessed life. Because the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he's trying to do right here in America. And make no mistake about it. Right now, hell, Satan, all of his minions, all of his cohorts, are plotting something evil and something very disastrous for America. He's plotting. He's strategizing, creating a stratagem. He's, he's working to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I'm concerned from now to the next inauguration date. I'm concerned. What will the enemies of our of America do? What, what, what are they going to do? They're watching all of this, folks. They're standing by. And what's happening in this nation is an impetus for them to do more evil things in the world, in the earth, and do America. I want to share a passage today before I close. Jeremiah chapter 4, beginning at verse 18. This is powerful. This is prior to the Babylonian captivity and destruction of Israel. Thy way and thy doings have procured or brought these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness because it is bitter, because it reacheth unto thine heart. Right now, the heart of so many people is not right with God. My bowels, my bowels. He's talking about his uh, seed of emotions, his heart, his, his inner emotions. He says, my bowels, my bowels. I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction. Upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. 
The entirety of Israel was about to be ruined, destroyed, and spoiled by King Nebuchadnezzar. Suddenly are my tents, talking about the, the curtain door of a tent. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? You see, God is blowing a trump right now. That's not a pun. I didn't mean that to be a pun. It's a, there's a trump. God's blowing the alarm. He's sounding the alarm throughout America. Verse 22, Jeremiah 4, 22. For my people is foolish. They've not known me. They are sottish. Another word for foolishness, children. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. Think of that. Leadership in this nation, they are profusely wise to do evil, terrible evil, wicked evilness, atrocious evilness. But to do good, they don't know how to do it. We're at a crossroads. We cannot afford to give up, surrender, or capitulate in this hour. As the body of Christ the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, his body. We are members of his body, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, Paul said in Ephesians 5. I believe we're on the verge of a move of God. I have been praying for it for years and years. We're getting close, but let me say this. Just before God gets ready to move, all hell is going to be unleashed. You say, I, I disagree with that. Just before Pentecost, the deluge, the fresh, the flood, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, Jesus was crucified. It was a dark day throughout the world at that time. It was a, 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 a day that was so dark to the disciples and the followers of Christ, it was immeasurable. It was unfathomable. But there was coming a resurrection. Had the disciples believed truly the words of Christ, all, all of them would have been around the tomb that morning and said, let's see if his word comes to pass. But there was nobody there because they just couldn't believe he could be raised from the dead and assure their salvation, assure their calling, assure their commission, assure everything about their lives. But he did rise that day. And he took the keys of death and hell, and he rules and he reigns and he lives forevermore. But I rejoice today, he's coming back. The Bible says in Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That's why you've got to keep praying. God asked the question, is there anything too hard for me? I I pray, I covet your prayers, and I pray you'll agree with me. Pray for divine exposure in this matter, this assassination attempt. Plead with God to reveal the truth. Now, even though God reveals it, sadly, there will be those who won't believe it. They won't embrace it. Oh, I don't believe that. That's because they're deceived. People who are deceived cannot recognize the truth when they hear it. I don't care what it is. Deceived people cannot know the truth. That's why they're deceived. They reject truth. If you keep rejecting the truth, how are you going to come to the knowledge of the truth? But deception suffers men to no longer embrace the truth. Luke 1, 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall shall be impossible. I want you to pray, petition, and plead with God right now. Don't, don't, don't be apathetic and complacent and discount and disregard what I'm saying today. You see, God's hand was in the midst of this assassination attempt. That's why Mr. Trump is still alive. Remember, the devil comes to steal to kill, and to destroy. It wasn't time. I've said this 
all my ministry, that's how certitude I am in Christ. Nothing can happen in your life unless God allows it. Nothing. I don't care what it is. The devil has to get permission. Go back and read the first chapter of the book of Job. Read that. Read that. He had to get permission from God. And God gave him the permission. And in that first onslaught of trial and tribulation on Job's life, it didn't work. Satan went back to God and said, skin for skin, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Let me touch his flesh. Let me touch his flesh. God said, okay, but you save his life. I believe it's Job 2 and 6. He said, he's in thine hand, but save his life. I preached a message years ago. Man in the hands of the devil. That's where God let Job be put. But in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Naked I came into this world, naked I shall return. The Lord hath given, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the kind of an attitude that we need in this hour. Don't surrender. Don't capitulate. But pray and fast with me. I, I beg you, I, I beseech you, I implore you, please fast with me several days in the next month or two. Please pray and fast with me. I believe God will pull down those strongholds and show America the, true, uh, the, the truth of all of this. All of this. Not just a portion. All of it. God can expose it. Thus let God arise and his enemies be scattered. God bless you. Thank you for loving us, praying for us and with us. And thank you for your support for this ministry. We thank you that you stand with us and you give to help us stay on the air because we're in the summer and this fall we're going to make some decisions whether we're going to stay on some stations or not. If you want us to stay on, you need to stand with us. God bless you and have a great week. The Voice of Evangelism with David Langford is brought to you by the faithful listeners and supporters throughout America. If you're looking for an uncompromising message, we invite you to tune in each week to The Voice of Evangelism. For more information, write to The Voice of Evangelism at P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. That's P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. Voice of Evangelism brings you Revival in America September 20th through the 22nd at the Hickory Metro Convention Center. There will be three speakers, David Lankford, Bishop Jimmy D. Smith, and Bishop Jonathan Lankford bringing an uncompromising message. There will be three services Friday, three services Saturday, and one service Sunday morning. Come and see what God is doing. For more information, go to our website at www.thevoiceofevangelism.com.